it's 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 hard for people. I need to just flick back very quickly um, uh, about the news, obviously from last night, confirmed at eight o'clock by the U.S. Coast Guard that the catastrophic implosion had taken the five lives of those uh, three of them Brits in the Titan submersible. We've had a reaction all morning, debris at five o'clock, and then that announcement by the Coast Guard at eight. A man who's been with us all week on talk. I just wanted to get an overall view. Rear Admiral Roger Lane, not former senior flag officer of the Royal Navy and NATO commander of submarines. Roger, you've been an absolute uh, fantastic at sidekick and, and person with such insight. Can you just, the morning after, for want of a better phrase, my friend, um, we've had lots of people ringing us and texting us and saying, regulations must change, this can never happen again. And putting to one side the, the tragedy and obviously what it means to the families in our hearts and uh, go out to them, things will change from this point on, won't they, Roger? Oh, I, I'm sure about that. I, I certainly, um, once they in, investigate, and whoever's going to do that, I'm assuming it'll be the US Coast Guard or the US government even, or maybe a combination of that. Um, um, but there's no doubt that there will have to be certification uh, and a better approach to how these things are built and then certified as being safe. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's not rocket science, effectively, every shipping every vessel merchant vessel military vessel uh, um, has to go through that process uh, but that's laid down in law and of course you can't get it you can't get insurance if it's not um, registered with lloyd's list and it's done its safety procedures when but you, i'm sure i'm sure that'll happen when you watch this tragedy unfold last night when you with your experience look back across the week they're now saying that it one hour 45 into that dive on Sunday from Halifax in, in, in Newfoundland, that, that actually when the comms went, and we've been following this for a whole week, that's likely to be when this catastrophic implosion happened. It was the millisecond and these people won't have felt pain. T tell me honestly, as an expert, did you have that underlying feeling for a week? I mean, we were told it was so to the rescue. Did you? I, I made the dis I, I decided on Monday night uh, when they lost comms, uh, that that was probably it. Uh, uh, and I tried to follow all the things. I think the thing that I found out yesterday, which was from one of the um, Explorers Society, who said that at 3,200 feet, they tried to abort the mission. Now, I didn't know that, and that mm. wasn't public, and it was all on the Explorers um, uh, WhatsApp, uh, uh, you know, thing. So uh, when you put that together, you, so you lost comms, you've got uh, somebody trying to abort at that stage, you've got the US seismic authority saying they had a, 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 an event uh, at that sort of time, um, and, uh, uh, and then the failure with all these sonar boys to find anything, all that, I, I reckon that by Tuesday morning, I'd already decided that in my own mind, that this was on the bottom and they should be look, get, need to get an ROV down to the bottom as soon as possible. It is um, it is a tragedy. I hope that lots is learnt from it. Um, it is a story and that's the wrong sort of description uh, it, that it, sort yeah. of captivated everybody. It's sort of, to me, and Benedict's still with me, it's almost played, and it sounds terrible, but I know what I mean, it's almost played out like a, a film the last yeah, week. Yeah, it, it has, it has, it has. And I, I mean, what I think I'd like to say is that I think Talk TV has handled the whole of this week um, extremely sensitively and done its best to stick to the facts and not speculate. And I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by the way you've handled it. Thank you, Roger. And you've been kind of... I, ju I just I felt that last night when we were, were on air at 7 o'clock and, and, and anything you say is speculation. Of course, we'd all heard the rumours. I heard rumours that the mother of that... The 19-year-old was on board, mm. on board that the the rescue ship above. Yeah. Literally, what what the hell is she going through? I heard from Terrible. also. I mean, I spoke to the guy Bart Kempfer yesterday. I said this earlier. Who was one of the co-signatories on a letter five years ago to Ocean Gate saying this yeah. isn't good enough. But it's not at that time that you can say that. We've spoken to experts like you, Roger, all week who have been so candid in your synopsis because, of course, like the rest of us, you don't want to say. But but I think for me, actually. When I, when I heard, and, and, and I, I don't know the sea, you know the sea, and I'll keep going back to this. When I heard that the water pressure is 360 times greater than being on land, when you're, when you're told that stat, Roger, do you remember we shared this on Tuesday, that it's like nine tower blocks made of lead on your head? And then for me, as a complete layman, right, I see this, 
I mean, it looks minute. I'm, you described it on Monday as flimsy. I guess myself as well Monday night. I thought, well, how can that survive that pressure, Roger? Do you know what I mean? Well, well what's interesting, of course, this was its um, seventh time that it had mm. been down. So it had survived it OK, but uh, the engineering, I think, was flawed in many ways, and we'll find out in due course wh whether that's true or not. But I, I do think the engineering and the, and the, the build quality was flawed. Um, and, and of course, the the actual framework that was found on the bottom, that was fundamental to the structure mm. and the resilience of that vessel in total. So once that, so I I I, I would say there was some form of um, leak of some sort. I, I thought initially it was a power failure, and it might well have been that, but I think it was more catastrophic than that, obviously. Um, um, Roger, I have nothing but admiration for you, and I must just tell you this, Terry Cavender, <clears throat> a good friend of my, mine who's uh, been in the army, now retired, um, sent me a text yesterday going, you need to get your act together, Kyle. Rear Admiral Roger Lay Knott, you should address him as Admiral. Very unimpressive and be respectful <laughs> in future. But Roger, thank you so much for being with Talk All Week on this. We do so appreciate it. Uh, this story, of course, Benedict, will continue mm. um, and we'll continue to talk about it. Uh, next as well, we're going to talk about Brexit. Seven years today, can you believe that? It feels like a lifetime ago. And yet it hasn't happened really, has it? There you go. <laughs> this is Talk Breakfast. Good morning.